This is episode 10 in my beginner watercolour series and in this video we're going to be looking at a simple uh, farmyard landscape scene. Hi, my name is Joe Cartwright. Welcome to my studio. My aim with these videos is to help you paint better watercolours. This series is all about the basics. If you're a beginner, or have found painting with watercolours challenging, then please join in as these videos are for you. And remember, if you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed of each new video I produce. Also, if you have any questions or requests, please leave them in the comment section below. This is the subject. The location is a lovely uh, New South Wales town called Tumut. And this, this is a very typical Australian farmyard scene. Right now, this looks very complex. And when I'm painting a subject like this, I like to simplify what I'm putting into my painting so that my message is easy to understand. And really, my focus for this painting is the building, these two buildings. So everything else I'm going to, I will tone down. Um, However, I do like this horse float here, and so I'll incorporate that in the design. I don't like this fence in the front. It's, it's, it's uh, acting as a bit of a stop for moving into the painting. Although I don't mind these two posts, so I'll probably just move them to the side and find a way to um, utilize this shape as a, as a lead in into the painting. Just one other point. Um, when you're painting a landscape scene like this, one of your first decisions is how much sky versus how much land. And a big sky adds depth and space to your painting. So I don't mind this as a composition. If you look at where the, the distant tree line is, uh, that there is about a quarter of the way up. And in, in my case, I'm going to come up just maybe just a fraction under a third or right on a third and I'll I will draw that line all the way across and then I'll the building don't make the building that big that it it overpowers the rest of the painting but it still has to be a significant shape so I'll start with a roof line And it's quite a high roof. And it has a small veranda. I'll make this angle a bit steeper. I'll draw in the chimney. The chimney is useful because it it helps to indicate where the light's coming from. So if you look at this, look at the photo, you'll see here that shadow, and that tells us the light is coming from this direction. And this has got an enclosed veranda. Just small, just a small one here. You know, I'm going to make this even steeper. That's good. And then we've got a big tree coming here. So and the tree's quite close to the house. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit into the land in front of the house. Go, and we've got a 
Might throw in a window. Add another window. Let's put a doorway here. This area here is, is dark because it's it's this just hinting at the side of the house. You can't see very much detail because this tree is going to cover that and just lightly indicate this big tree. And have another tree over here. I'm not going to worry too much about all the other little trees in the distance, but we've got a hill here. Let's put that up. So I think that's a nice thing to have. A couple of windows. I don't try to get too accurate with the windows. I want to give them a little bit of character. And then we've got this shed. You can only see a, just a sliver of this side. And I'm going to put a window here. Here we go. And uh, let's put this horse float around about here. You can't see the wheels because of all the grass, or, but we can see this, the actual shape of the float itself and we know it's sort of dark underneath there. Might, I might end up hinting at the wheels. That'll do. Let's put a doorway here. And we'll have a fence line running along this area. We can have a tree here. Lots of trees, tree here. I still want to have glimpses of the hill coming through. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I might put a water tank here. There we go, and I'm going to have some clouds coming through this way. Um, big cloud here, and maybe something a bit smaller over here. The fence line I'll put in later. Um, these posts. Yeah. 
Let's put one there. We might stick it, give it a brace. Another one here. That'll do. It appears to have a slightly sunlit veranda, so I'll, I might put that in. You don't have to put in everything. Just because something's in a photo doesn't mean it has to go into your painting. You're creating a work of art, so only put in the things that you think will contribute to your subject. I always say never let reality get in the way of good painting. I will just hint at the, um, the corrugations. Very lightly. Okay. Same here. And I'm going to put some cows. Let's put a couple of cows in here. Maybe one. And, and these cows are just to add a little bit of animal life. Just start with like a little rectangle. Put a diagonal down for the head. Actually, we'll put the legs in. Later I'll produce a video on, on how to draw cows. But the, the main thing is you don't want the body to be too long and you don't want the legs to be too tall. The other thing is don't make the heads very big. If they, if they look very big, um, it's not going to look like a cow. And then, so there's a cow on its eating on the side. This one will have a little rectangle this way. Something like that. His head comes out this way. There. It's not meant to be a portrait of a cow. It's just got to look enough like a cow that in the distance it will read like a cow. I'll indicate the shadow here so I don't forget to put that in. I might put a couple of drums, just some simple shapes. So, I, because there's going to be some red in the roof, it, it'll allow me to distribute some more red in this part. Just a shape like that. Okay, so there's our drawing. Let's get started with the painting now. Let's wet the back of the painting. So just paint up to as close to the edge you can without painting over the edge if you're worried about getting any moisture on the front of the painting. Usually it doesn't matter, but um, that's just something you can keep in mind. 
go. All right, while that's uh, absorbing the water, let's mix some colors. Now for the sky, it's just a blue sky with some white fluffy clouds. I don't need a lot of um, paint for that. Just a couple of brush loads. It's more than enough. Test it. Maybe just a little bit stronger. And that's pretty good. Okay, so that's, that's the blue. And then for the ground, um, we want brown grass, you know, light brown grass in the distance. And, um, and then I'm going to have some green grass in the foreground. So effectively, I'm going to swap the green for some of this brown. So I'll start by mixing, and it's a, it's a warm brown, so I'm going to have some red and yellow. blue to cool it down a little bit so it's not quite an orangey brown. That's a, I've cooled that a little bit too much so I'll just add some more yellow and red and we'll move it. Remember the colours will dry duller as well. Um, I'll add a little bit of water just to lighten the tone a bit. Great, we'll go with that. Okay, now I need to mix a little bit of green for the foreground, maybe just one brush load. This is quite a small painting. And uh, to mix green, your primary uh, colors for that are the blue and the yellow. And it's quite a bright green, so really you've got more yellow than blue. So I'll mix, I'll bring some of this over here and just add more yellow to it. I don't want to waste this colour because I'll use it for the trees. And that's pretty good. Okay, and then maybe a little bit of this brown just to grey it off a little bit. So whenever you add brown, you're effectively adding all the three primary colors together. So it'll always dull whatever color you've got there. Great. All right, so I'm gonna wet the back of this once more. Don't have to be so careful now because I'm going to turn this over since I get to the bottom. Great thing with this wetting the back technique is you, you're always painting on flat paper until it starts to dry. Pick that up and I'll wet the board. If you haven't seen my earlier videos, I, I spend more time talking about why I, uh, why I wet the back of the paper in those earlier videos. There we go. Great. So that's nice and dry, but it's sitting flat and there's plenty of moisture um, in the paper. I want white cloud, lots of blue, and maybe a little bit of cloud over here. So I'll pick up my brush just drag, so pick up a brush of the blue, drag the brush through the edge of the palette, take out about half the paint, and then start at the top here. And, you see, and those little hairs that are just sticking to the paper are helping us create an interesting cloud pattern. So I paint the space between the clouds. This is called negative painting. 
and then I'll fill that in. Let some of that, there we go, and we'll let some of that paint just drip down and, and form some beads here. Just beads of paint just sitting there, pooling at the bottom of the, um, the sky. Now I'll clean my brush, tap it a couple of times, and then come in from this direction. And now I'm letting some of those hairs just touch parts of the, the, the blue sky. Just keep it moving. I'm not rolling the brush, I'm just holding it steady. There we go. And the main thing is um, you want to touch the blue here and there, but also you want to make sure there are plenty of areas you don't touch so that you, you maintain this extra little sparkle in the sky. Now I'm going to minimize. If you, if, if some, if you have too many, too many of these sort of broken edges, you can go in and soften them with the edge of your brush. I'm then going to put a bit more blue here, just to give this cloud a bit more shape, and then I'll bring it down to about there. Oops, I don't want to paint through the building. Now, that's it for the sky. I've got a hill in the distance, so I've got a little bit of the blue left. I'm going to add a touch of um, the permanent rose to it, a little bit more blue. And more permanent rose. I'm just trying to, it's, I want to create a blue with just a hint of the pink in it and then add a little bit of this brown to grey it off. And we'll test that. And that's pretty good. Actually, I'll make it just a little bit stronger in tone. So you make your mix is stronger in tone by adding more paint and not adding more water. So you're effectively you're increasing the, the paint consistency. Then here we've got a hill coming up this way, paint around the house. Paint around the chimney. You've got to be reasonably quick when doing this. Um, I find it's easy just to use the point to paint around the shapes and then quickly fill in the colour. There we go. And around here. And Sometimes we're using the point of the brush, sometimes we're using the side of the brush. It just depends on what's comfortable and, and convenient and, and needed. You know, it's hard to draw detail when you're holding the brush back here. So when I'm doing detail and fine line, I'm getting closer to the front of the brush um, with my fingers on the ferrule for, for more uh, fluid, um, uh, brush marks, I'll work at the back here like when I'm creating foliage. Now I'll keep moving so I don't want it, this to dry. And, and down here I'm just going to clean my brush and bring these edges down. I'm going to have a couple of red drums or something here. Just in a random fashion. I don't want this to stop as a, at a sharp edge. Uh, same here, just soften that. That's good enough. Mm. 
Now, the other thing where I'm going to put my trees, I'll lift some of that colour so that I don't get a, a, an edge that is sharply defined um, behind the tree. So by lifting some of that colour, I, I get a nicer connection into the background. Also, if the hill colour is, is too dark, now's the time to lift some. And that'll allow me to have some brighter colours when I paint the trees. The thing with watercolours, you're always thinking about your, your final composition and... Um, and thinking ahead so if you if you know you're going to have bright colors here then it's a good time to lift some of the um, some of the paint here I use too much water um, when I softened that edge so I was getting a shape that was just too too round so I'll just change it it doesn't matter too much again because I've got a I'm going to have a big tree here just modify that. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, just bring. So I'm just setting up the painting for the foliage that's going to come forward. Now I'll, I'll do the foreground. Get rid of that. I think it's a piece of tissue. Go. And I've mixed this colour and I might make, so I pick up some of this paint, they're going to dip the brush in some water to dilute it further, maybe a bit more dilution, in fact a lot more dilution. Paint around these cows. Again, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I'll paint through a cloud, a cow. If it's going to be a black cow, I'll paint, and I'm just painting with a light brown or beige, then you can paint through it. If I was painting green around them, I wouldn't paint through them because the, the green is very hard to um, remove. And instead of having a, a black cow, you'll end up with a greenish cow. And um, now I'll go into the thicker paint quick brush strokes, so I want to leave some areas of untouched paper and I need to make that a, just a little bit stronger in tone. So how do we make it stronger in tone? More paint and no more water. Now obviously if you'd run out of paint completely you have to start with a bit of water but then you've got to add enough paint to get you beyond uh, uh, um, to create a thicker mix than what you had just been using. There we go. So that should be just a bit darker and stronger in tone. There we go. There. Now I'll go into the green. I want this green here. And, and that's a bit too light, so let's. We don't want red, we want blue. The other thing is always to be aware of where you're picking up paint. If you've got a very wet part of your, your um, paint well, if you pick that paint up from that area, you'll, you'll actually be picking up a lot of moisture with it. So if you want. Um, drier paint, you've got to pick it up from the edge or wherever there's a dry part of your paint well. And just a little bit of this red to dull it. A bit more yellow. There we go. 
quick brush marks. Maybe break it up with a bit of this brown. Hint it, just hint it a bit of green. There. Get rid of some of these, this white that I've left. Some of them can be later, I can turn them into seed heads if I feel they they contribute to the composition. Now, I'm going to pick up my size 8 brush and grab some thicker paint. Maybe a bit of red, blue, there's some brown. And holding the brush in this direction, don't hold it this way or the paint splatter is going to go up there. Hold it in this direction and just a few taps and vary the distance and the size of the splatter so it's not, doesn't look like you've got a machine out and and just stabbed at it. Um, might even grab some of the yellow. Maybe slightly stronger yellow. Let's just add some interest in the foreground. You can even use clear water, take out about half to three quarters of the water, just light, just very light splatter. Again, if you go stronger, you more of the paint will run down the paper, but that's, that's up to you, depends on what you're trying to create. The other thing with clean water, again, we'll take, tap a lot of the paint out, you can run it through Around like this and create what look like um, tracks in the grass. Okay, so now we've done the sky, we've done the distant hill, and we've done the foreground. And at this stage, we effectively have a landscape, uh, but we we can now move to the next stage where we're putting in the detail. Before I do anything else, I've got to dry it because when I painting the building and the trees, I don't want all the colours to run into one another. Normally, this is where I go and have a coffee. And I'll, I'll, before I leave, I'll just make sure I don't have any excess moisture pooling around the edge that could give me a cauliflower. Um, and then when I come back, enough of the paint has settled that I can get the hairdryer out and um, and and dry it completely so that we can then paint the hard edges that will that'll be a key part of the next stage of the painting. So I've now dried this and um, I, I can begin by painting the uh, the foliage in the background. Now in drying it obviously it's also dried parts of the inside of the the paper um, but there's still moisture in there I haven't I only just wanted that top you know fraction of a millimeter dry so if I just wet the board like this make sure it's quite sloshy there we go And that should be enough to hold that there. And just be careful when you're drying the edge, you don't just run a wet brush, a wet tissue over your painting. So we've got green trees. Um, We've got light coming from this side. I'm going to start by mixing uh, two 
main tones, a, and these aren't bright, uh, other than one tree here's got quite a lot of bright green to it, and um, but most of the other colours are a little bit muted. So what I'm mixing here is, uh, when you're mixing greens with just three colours, you start with the yellow, add a little bit of blue, uh, that way the blue won't totally overpower your initial mix. If you start with lots of blue and then try and add yellow, you might have to add a lot of yellow to get the right colour. So here I've mixed a, um, a green that will be, probably form the mid-tone of my trees. So, uh, so you're going to have some, a light tone, a mid-tone and then a few darker tones. In this area here, I'll add a little bit more water. Um, yeah, and a little bit of the other colours are fine because even though there's bright greens, they're not, they're not fluorescent bright, they're just leaning more to the yellow than this green. So that little bit of brown will just uh, dull that colour off. And that's probably the right colour except it's too weak. So it's not going to cover very much, very well. So we'll add more paint, no more water. Yeah, that's probably okay. Now, because these are quite small shapes, I'm going to paint them primarily with my size 8 brush. So we'll start with our lighter tone. And this is a, is a key tree, so I'm going to start with that. Now, a good tip while you're learning this technique, rather than picking up a brush that's all, you know, fully loaded, meaning it'll drip when you, when you do that, just pick up the paint and then drag it through the edge of your palette to take out maybe half the, the moisture. And then start on the bulk of the tree till you get a, an idea of where the paper is and then move to the edge. So I'm painting the, the brighter part here. And then I'll paint into so I'm going to paint the shape of the tree with this brighter green. There we go. This tree here is quite bright too. And again, just because you don't have to stick to what's in the photo. So I'm right now I'm, I'm making more compositional decisions. There. want to protect this shape. So again, if you want control, you use the point of the brush. If you want more random shapes, use the side of the brush. There we go. That'll do. And these trees are going to have a bit of brightness in them too. The paper is drying and starting to cockle. That makes it a bit more difficult to paint the um, paint these shapes. Because you, because you, when you hit a cockle, your brush effectively gets rammed into the paper. And I want to, I want to leave plenty of bird holes so I can actually see some of the hill in the distance. There we go. And this one.
Now, if you find your paper is drying too fast, you can either lift it and wet the back or you can get a spray bottle and give it a light spray like this, you know, spraying that way so that your lightest drops land on that, on the actual uh, wet parts of your painting. Whatever is more convenient. That'll do. So, so I've created the pattern of uh, the foliage I'm going to use, and I and I, this is where I, I go in and make sure there's no regularity. I don't want um, you know straight lines or trees all the same height. We, we tend to like things that are more random. So now I'm going to pick up this sort of darker tone and just drop that in with the tip of my brush into the wet paint and it will f and it will uh, flow to the edge of these shapes if i've got a lot of bird holes then i can actually um, you know paint through them with the side of the brush but if i want to protect them then i'll just use the tip of the brush Turn that into another tree. And you'll get a, a sunlit side and, and then the side away from the sun will be darker. There we go. And I'm going to make another tone which is stronger than this. So this time I'm going to start with blue, a bit of yellow. and just a tiny bit of red. Now, if you're not sure how much red is on your brush, I suggest you, you tap it in a dry part of your palette before adding it to your mix, because otherwise you could end up adding too much red and then your, your green will go from green to brown very quickly. So, let's, so this is a darker tone and this is my darkest tone. These are the deep shadows. And this tree here has some very strong dark tones. I'll change its shape a little bit, so sort of use the side of the brush. And down below, quite often, you'll have darker areas of the tree too, where the um, where the light is just not penetrating far enough. Great. Then I'm going to mix a little brown. How do I mix brown? Well, I've got some green. When you think green is already yellow and blue, if I add a bit of red to it, I'll create a brown, provided I add enough red. And I'll use that to go in and paint the trunks. And while the tree is wet, this is a perfect time to paint the branches. It just gives you a nice connection to the tree. There. Because what happens is where the paint hits of the the branch hits the wet paint of the foliage, you get a nice uh, blending of the two together. There we go. You just got to make sure that the the brown you mix is not too thick or dark in tone. 
otherwise again it'll start looking unnatural. And I don't have to have too much of this. Just enough to say, yeah, there's some branches there. Good. And then down here, foliage, I'll just pick a slightly brighter, maybe slightly, a little bit of brown. I'm just painting some just hints of reddish autumn foliage. Maybe add a bit more yellow. And this this is to help balance all the red that's going to appear on the roof in a minute. There we go. Go back to some green down here. And I'm, I purposely haven't painted that into a sharp edge because, I, because when you look into the distance, if you look at the photo, there's lots of things happening. And, um, and if it's a sharp edge, it looks like instead of grass, you, it's more like concrete or something. Yeah. There we go. I'd like just a little bit more dark in here, so just remix my dark green, add a little bit of this brown in it just to dull it off, and make it even stronger. There we go. And I'll just soften any edges that I think are a bit too obtrusive. And the same here. That'll do. Now I'll get some of this brown that I've got over here. Maybe add a bit more blue just to cool it down a bit. So your blues and greens are considered cool colours and then the yellows and reds are your warmer colours. There we go. And that's good enough for the foliage. If you were to end up with a very flat shape, so you say you got rid of all of these little bird holes, you can always retrieve them by getting um, either the edge of your fingernail or getting a credit card and using this curved bit here you could you could just scrape out some shapes and, and just vary their shape. Now when you do that if you do it into paint that's still quite wet what actually happens is that the it makes the credit card breaks the sizing on the paper the, um, the wet paint falls into that gap and because there's no more sizing there and the sizing is what limits or controls how quickly or otherwise your paint is absorbed. Once you get rid of that sizing underneath it's a bit like blotting paper so you tend to get a dark edge 
where the paper still is only just stamp, you'll get white edges. I usually try to aim for a little bit of in between so that my branches that I scrape in have some variety um, in them. I don't need to do that here. Uh, let me go and dry this and, um, and then we'll start painting the buildings. All right, I've dried this area um, so I can comfortably paint the, the, um, the buildings without too much of the green running into it. But I'm going to need to wet this board again. This re-wetting is really um, just a, it's just worth the effort. It just makes it so much easier when you're painting on a flat piece of paper. Let's work on these buildings. Now, the rusty roof, because you've got a blue sky here, some of that blue will reflect, will shine down onto the roof and modify that colour. So. I'm going to use some, look for uh, whatever blue I've got here and then dilute it with a lot of um, water. I'm sure my brush doesn't have any green in it, however. So we'll paint a little. Okay, so here I'm going to mix some red with a little bit of the yellow to create, um, in this case, a slightly dull brown color. It's still reasonably bright, but there's hints of green here which um, will dull it. And then I'm gonna drop in here and there into the wet roof. some of this red, but I don't, I want to leave some white parts of the roof as well. Then a little bit here, this, a lot of this moisture is pooling at the bottom. I'm going to lift that out just to speed up the drying time. I don't need a lot of these colors, so I'm mixing them in a dry part of my palette. And, and the other thing is make sure you don't create, you know, very regular looking pattern. You know, rust is fairly indiscriminate as to where it appears. And apart from that, we want to create a more interesting shape. So let that um, soak in a little bit. While it's doing that, I'll get rid of that. I'm going to mix the same mixture, but thicker, less paint, sorry, less water. Maybe dull it with a bit of this brown or add a little bit of the blue. So I want to create another level of paint consistency. And then I'll go into that here and there. Some areas I'll pick a different spot. I can use this moment to paint my chimney. Okay. So I'm effectively creating different layers of rust. There we 
go. And then later when that dries, I'll go in yet again with a, a dry brush stroke and add the final layer of texture. On the roof line, quite often there's some extra rust there and I can use that to help define the edge here and there. But I've got to break it up. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to look like I'm creating an outline. All right, and that's fine for the roof at this stage. Actually, well, I've got that color. We've got a couple of drums back here. I only want a little bit of moisture in my brush, I'll, I'll look for some moisture in the palette. There we go. There. Now, this part of the building has a beige colour, so I'll find a dry part of my palette, start with the yellow, add a little bit of the pink or any brown that I can find. Too much. That's probably good enough. Paint around the windows very loosely. And we're going to use the same colour, maybe a little bit cooler. Under here. And there's a veranda there, some light on it. darker. There we go. Might use the same colour for this building, but maybe add a bit more, just vary it, maybe a bit, bit of brown. Now, uh, here you'll see what happened. I should have you know, probably waited, being a bit impatient, and, um, and let that roof dry before I paint, painted this. So what's happened now is some of this moisture's bled up and given me these shapes, um, like mini cauliflowers on the roof. I'll have to adjust that before I continue. But um, it's easy to fix, but it's, that's the problem when you, when you rush ahead. There we go. So to fix these, I'll just drag some brush through here to get rid of some of the excess moisture before I do anything. Otherwise it'll just continue to happen. And now I'll go in with my rust colour. I've got some What I want to do is I want to create a colour that's close to a black. So start with some blue, that's my darkest colour, then a little bit of the 
um, permanent rose, tiny bit of the yellow, too much yellow, so a bit more red. So if you want, if you see a colour and you want to get rid of that colour and move it back towards a grey or black, then you just find the colour that's opposite on the colour wheel, which is why that, that uh, exercise we did, I think it was number three, of producing a colour wheel is so important, uh, because that's how you, you can keep modifying your colours. So, Good, it's just a bit too strong. So just a little dry brush stroke to add just a hint of light to these windows so they're not, you know, not dead square. This way they have a bit more character to them. And somewhere here there should be a door, so let's put a door there. And this is relatively thick paint, but there's not a lot of moisture, and because there's not a lot of moisture in that part of the palette, it, it, it sort of generally stays where, where you put it. Um, later, I'm going to go in and put a shadow in here so those windows won't look so, so stark. So, and I'll use, well, I've got that little bit of paint there. Let's... Actually, I should put a beige wash over my there we go, very pale wash over the horse float. So I'm just hinting at these windows later. I can redefine them a little bit. Okay, let's try that. All right, so I forgot to turn the recording on. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through to what I did in this stage. I mixed some of my shadow color, um, which is some a, a violet mixed with um, the blue the red leaning a little bit to the blue and then just a hint of green to grey it off and I then um, use that to paint through this area and um, and to find some of these darker shadow shapes. I'm going to make this underneath the, the roof a little bit stronger in tone again. That'll just help to add light to it. There we go. And I just painted through that area, um, then lifted some of the paint at the bottom to, to give me a graded wash from here to here. And then later I went in with a, a darker mix again, just to re-establish the dark underneath the awning, similar to what I'm going to do now. That'll help add even more depth to that part of the painting. This is in light, sunlight, so I've left that like that. The same with this area here. Um, I finished off the, the water tank with some rust and some of these pillars. Um, and just redefined the, the horse float a little bit better. In the distance, just some quick dry brush strokes just to break up that edge so it's not too solid looking and here and there um, just quick marks like that and, and what these broken edges do is they leave shapes that are a bit indistinct and it really is up to the viewer then to to finish what's happening there you know some will see a one shape and someone else will see another shape okay so that's the basic thing that um, I didn't capture um, I redefined parts of the roof with some thicker paint 
and I painted the cows with uh, a, a dark, dark grey colour, not quite a black. And the main thing with the cows is any if the cow's bigger, its feet have got to touch the ground lower down the paper. Okay, and then I use the same shadow colour here for the shadow for the cows and this um, and this and the um, the horse float. This is probably dried enough now that I can get some sh weak shadow colour. That's, that's not very weak, Joe. Let's add some water. Just to further establish the side of that horse float. Okay, so now let's put in these foreground posts. So I'm just going to mix a brown. How do we mix a brown? All three primary colours. There, maybe a bigger one here. Maybe some sort of post, something just to support it. Um, you know, I'm going to have another one maybe here, just leaning into the painting. That'll do. And then, um, before I do anything else, let's get this shadow that we've got here. And we need to add the shadow, this tree. Just a line like that. Make it a bit longer than the shadow for the... And it's the shadow that connects the tree to the ground. Okay. extra shadow here. And then I'll get a brush without very much moisture in it. You can sort of see how the hairs are just splayed out like that. Maybe just a little bit more moisture. And just quick flicks. Very light touch. And that will create the impression of grass near the fence line. And then in the distance, we can do the same. And think of them more as a shorthand of saying, Yes, there's grass over here, but really what I'm doing is just breaking up these shapes into more interesting shapes. So it's not just a, a, a bare, um, empty space. Get some of this shadow colour, maybe just hint at that. There we go. And then underneath here, these will have some sort of shadow or as a broken edge. Because in long grass the shadow is not going to be a sharp edge. It's going to be it's going to hit parts of the grass that are in light and other parts that are in uh, in shade. Just get some this green and fix this section here. There we go. We can paint around this brighter tree a bit and help define it. Clean my brush 
and then just soften some of these edges. And then, there we go. And normally I would then you know, put the put the painting away and then look at it over the next, you know, later in the day or over a number of days and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. And what we need to do now is get my mat. You can always put a mat around your painting before you sign it, otherwise you could later discover when you come to framing it that you've, um, uh, yeah, you're going to cut half your signature off or something. So I'll just get a warm brown colour. And your signature is just part of the design of the painting, so you have to give a little bit of thought to where you're going to put it. If I didn't have this post here, I'd probably put it on this side, but because I've got that there, I'll sign it here, and I pick a colour that complements and helps balance the painting. So I'm using a warm, slightly reddish brown, because I've got all this red up here. Here we go, and you know I might just throw one or two birds up here. No one's got. A little bit more interest. And I have one quick look at it in case there's something else that I feel like I need to add. We can put a reddish drum here maybe. There's a lot of junk in that around this house. So that's done and I'll see you for the next painting.